So question four, uh, our CHRP 10, Performance, Management and Productivity. 4A says, outline the activities that are carried out at the beginning of the performance cycle. Activities that are carried out at the beginning of the performance cycle. So the first thing here we need to understand is the performance cycle. What happens at the beginning of the performance cycle? So performance cycle is made up of four different stages. Planning, monitoring, reviewing, and rewarding. So the first stage of performance cycle is planning. So what normally happens at the beginning of the performance cycle is anything to do with planning. So that is what you want to have a look at. So during planning phase of the performance cycle, what are some of the activities that are associated with the planning phase? So in planning, the managers or the management basically strategizes on the goals, on the overall goal and the overall objective of that particular uh, uh, particular uh, process of that particular activity that they are about to take. So before meeting the employees, involving them in terms of, of them giving their opinions, in terms of them giving the suggestions, the management are the one, the people in the top management are the ones to sit down basically and strategize on everything. That will be the first step. So they'll have to sit down and agree on the way forward, the way that the goals or the objectives are, that are going to come up with are going to be long term or short term. All that will be discussed at the first stage. So before anything else, the management will have to come and strategize on that, on how the objectives are going to be made and what type of, of objectives are going to be made. Then the next step will basically the management stretching and looking for the employees involve them in the goal setting theory remember uh, the goal setting process remember we said that there's a, there's a, there are several benefits that come up with involving employees in setting performance goals so once the management have sat down they've had their meeting discussed and strategized on everything the next step will basically be looking for these employees and welcome inputs welcome suggestions welcome opinions from these employees so that the goal or the objectives that they come up with uh, could be done or could be arrived at collaboratively together with their with their employees so once uh, this uh, particular stage has been achieved now the next step will be basically allowing the people the personnel the employees basically to come up with their personal objectives remember the company will come up with the objectives and then also employees will have their different personal objectives and uh, of course, they'll have to be objectives that are in line with the company objectives or organizational objectives. So as much as I have my personal objectives as an employee of this organization or of a particular organization, I have to consider that or I have to be considered to ensure that the personal goals that I have are in line with the goals of the organization so that you cannot end up uh, like uh, having some sort of confusion or doing things that are not supporting the organization in general and then another thing that will also be done or other activities that will also be carried out during the planning phase still is basically agreeing on personal development or training programs remember these goals are put they act as a standard that is set by the organization which will be used to measure the performance of the employees so at the end of the day once the employees have done their jobs once the employees have delivered their roles and responsibilities, you'll have to see their performance. Have they really contributed towards achieving the goals or not? If they have contributed something towards achievement of the goals, well and good. But what happens if these employees have not basically achieved or have not uh, done as per what is expected? And that is how we are, we are the, the issues to do with training and development comes in. For those employees who are not able to deliver, for those employees who are not able to achieve the goals or to meet the goals, then that means there's a, there's a certain reason. Maybe this person is lacking a skill. Maybe this person is lacking knowledge. Maybe this person is lacking a certain sort of experience. So what's the way forward for these employees? So that means also that could be, those are part of the activities or, or those are part of the discussions that are made in the planning, in the planning process. So the, the performance cycle is very wide made up of the four stages or four phases that we've mentioned, planning becomes one. And what happens under the planning phase or what happens under the planning stage is what the question is looking for. So some of the activities that are carried out in the planning phase are just by the ones that we just discussed. And then the B part of the question, number 4B, 
saying the employees of Varika Limited are developing their performance objectives. Assess the characteristics that such objectives should possess to be effective. So here we are going further. We've talked of uh, having advantages of involving employees in goal setting a process. But here at this point in time, you are looking at it on another perspective. Yes, we involve the employees in making goals. Yes, we involve the employees in making the objectives. But then, what are some of the qualities that these goals and objectives should have in order for them to be effective? So in simple words, the question is looking for characteristics of or qualities of good goals or objectives. So assess the characteristics that such objectives should possess in order for, for them to be effective. So characteristics of good or characteristics of effective objectives. And we all know that in setting objectives, you normally look at the SMART technique. So once we understand what SMART technique is, we basically, under, we basically answer this particular question. Objectives have to be SMART, meaning that they have to be very specific and well-defined in order for, for issues to do with confusion to be eliminated. When a goal is not specific, when a goal is not well-defined, chances of the employees to be confused within the organizations will be very high because they will not, they will not understand exactly what that specific goal is looking for. So ensure that goals are specific and well-defined. That is the first uh, quality, that is the first characteristic in smarter letter S. And then second, they have to be measurable. I ensure that you have, ensure you come up with measurable goals. Goals which can be measured, goals which can be quantified. That is the only way you can be able to tell whether indeed you're in the right direction or not. Because yeah, they say measurable in nature refers to the fact that a goal has to have a ruler or a scoreboard attached to it. Why? So that you can be able to measure, uh, so that you can be able to see whether you are progressing well or basically not. Because if the goals are not measurable, how are you going to, 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 to check your performance? How are you going to tell whether you are indeed doing it right or basically not? That is why you need to have measurable goals. And then another characteristic, a goal should be realistic or a goal should be achievable. You need to come up with goals which are, which are real, goals which are achievable. Sometimes you, you end up stressing or you end up frustrating yourself because you are coming up with goals which are not realistic. Something that can never be possible and then you call that a goal. How? That is going to frustrate you. That is going to stress you. That is going to put pressure in you. And at the end of the day, you will not achieve it. Whether come rain or sun. Basically, why? Because the goal is not realistic. So ensure you come up with goals that are realistic, goals that are achievable. That is also another characteristic of an effective goal or objective. Number four, we have uh, a relevant. Yes, goals have to be relevant. Is it going to be something uh, good? Is it going to, con to contribute uh, something good in your business, in your organization or not? Because there's no way you can come up with objectives which are not relevant to your business or to your organization. Most of the times the goals you come up with, these are really things that you need them done things that you need them achieved because once they are achieved it's a plus for your business once they are achieved it's a plus for your organization so another characteristic of an effective objective or goal is basically it should be relevant within the area of operation in which you are you are covering and then also they should be challenging yes a goal or objective should be challenging it should be able to give you the reason to become aggressive it should be able to give you the purge to keep on pressing on until you reach where you want to reach that is also a characteristic of a of a goal so that is our question number four of the paper thank you and let's meet in our next question number five